Welcome back, make yourself comfortable and I will continue our tale about the legendary heroes of Waterdeep. With the death of Halaster's simulacrum, the tavern begins to fade, and moments later our heroes find themselves back in the giant's cave. Kurdic is standing with a young boy in a school uniform, just outside where the tavern was. As the rest of our heroes see Kurdic, they approach him and Grid asks, who is the kid? Larilla slightly worried asks, is he safe down here? Kurdic gestures towards the boy, this is lad, my new assistant and he is not what he appears. Loading smiles, nice to meet you laddie. Kurdic turns to lad, these are our allies, you will work with them. Lad nods his head, yes sir. Grid still a little puzzled asks, how did you get a new assistant down here? Kurdic smiles, there has been a change of management in my warlock business. Our heroes decide they need to spend some time resting and treating their wounds. Grid suddenly remembers about the bears, and worries the poison air may have killed the cubs. Grid followed by Larilla rush to where they met the bears, and are relieved to see the four bears are all still alive. After spending the rest of the night and most of the morning resting, Lord Zorga announces, I think I better report back what happened down here. Myself and Safira will head back to Waterdeep. The Black Viper adds, I will go back as well. I feel overwhelmed and not of much use down here. My skill set is not what you require at the moment. Lord Zorga nods, you are welcome to join me and Safira. I will have one more go at fixing the giant's memories before I depart though. Loading rubs his beard, speaking of giants. How about I teleport a group of us back to Waterdeep with the dead giant and get him resurrected? Grid nods, that is an excellent idea loading, but what if his memories don't come back and he is hostile? Kaimin adds, how about you take the mother with you? She will be able to calm him down. Loading nods, it sounds like we have a plan then. Lord Zorga spends a few minutes with the giants that still have no memories, and it feels slightly easier to return their memories to them, likely due to them not having their memories wiped again the previous midnight. The remaining three giants have their memories restored. Meanwhile, Loading has sat with Speliosa and the bard tells her of the plan, Speliosa, some of us are returning to Waterdeep, and would like to take your son's body and have him brought back to life. We would like for you to accompany us, as we are unsure what condition his mind will be in, and as his mother you should be able to provide him comfort, even if he does not immediately recognize you. Speliosa thinks long and hard on Loading's proposition, and is hesitant at first, but agrees to go with Loading. An hour later, after Loading has attuned to the Horned Ring, he gathers everyone up, we will be leaving soon. There is space for two more people if anyone else wants to return with us. Grid smiles, I will. I want to buy some fish for the bears. Larilla jumps up excitedly, I will come with you. We can check on my pets while we are up there. Loading nods, then it is settled. We leave in five minutes. Five minutes later those going to Waterdeep stand beside Loading, and moments later they find themselves standing in the hero's garden, Waterdeep's only public park. The bard ensuring there was enough space for a giant to safely appear. The hero's garden is also only a short walk from the Temple of Beauty, where one of the Sunite priests should be able to bring the giant back to life. As the group make their way to the Temple of Beauty, the Black Viper does not go with them, and departs saying, this is where we part ways for now. If you need me, I will rejoin you but for now I need a break from Under Mountain. At the Temple of Beauty, after making a donation of 1500 dragons the priests agree to resurrect the giant. The giant is restored to life, but Lord Zorga is unable to restore its memories. The giant looks confused, but Speliosa spends some time calming and reassuring him. The giants are left in the temple, while the rest of the group get on with their business. Lord Zorga and Sephira head off to the palace, where they spend a long time waiting for Lady Silverhand to be available. Larilla and Grid head down to Dock Street and look for a fisherman with a fresh haul of fish. It does not take long for Larilla and Grid to find a fisherman, as the dock was overrun with them. They find an elf who had a wide range of fish of all different sizes. Grid asks, what are your finest and freshest fish? The fisherman holds a large silver fish up, this one. It's a deep water salmon, and is popular with nobles all across water deep. Larilla looks at the fish, how many do you have? The fisherman smiles, 
I have maybe around 50 to 60. Grid asks, how long do they stay fresh for? The fisherman thinks for a moment, depends how you store them. I can prepare and salt one for you if you want it to last longer. Larilla asks, how much? The fisherman smiles, two dragons for a fresh, and three for a prepared and salted one. Grid smiles, we will take the lot. Half salted, half not. The fisherman nods his head, it will take me a while to prepare the order. How about we call it 100 dragons for the lot? Larilla smiles, 100 it is. Grid hands over some gems worth 100 dragons, and the fisherman begins preparing the order. While Grid waits for the fish to be prepared, Larilla goes to check on her pets and finds that they are doing well. Meanwhile, Loading has made his way to the nearest Aurora's realms to purchase spell components for his spells. A few hours later Loading, Larilla, and Grid arrive back at the Temple of Beauty and Loading teleports the three of them along with the two giants back down to the floating castle. Loading gives Kurdic back the horned ring, and while Grid and Larilla take the fish to the bears, the giants are reunited with each other. Our heroes spend the rest of the day celebrating, feasting, and drinking with the giants, emptying the floating castle's pantry in the process. The next day our heroes make their way down to the next level of Undermountain. As they follow the tunnel down over, the air begins to grow humid and thick. Sweat begins to cling to our heroes like a desperate child. Insects buzz in the distance, growing louder by the second. Finally, the tunnel ends at a precipice overlooking an entire marsh. Our heroes climb down into the swamp, but Holy Flame not wanting to get his feet wet moans, I will stay here. I don't want to be a burden. Grid smiles, you are not a burden little buddy. How about, loading your shield guardian can carry Egan can't it? Loading nods, it sure can. With that settled, Holy Flame sits on the shield guardian's back, happy he does not have to get wet. As our heroes head off into the swamp, they go around a corner and see two hovels made of stone and mud. Outside the hovels are two giant toads, each the size of a horse, and there are four frog-like men, slightly taller than Larilla, that are mending some tools. Noticing the approach of our heroes, one of the frog men with a note of concern in his voice, begins to speak. Lad is the only one who can speak the language, and moments later Loading has cast a comprehend languages spell so he too can understand. The frogman begins to converse with our heroes, using Lad as a go-between. Still concerned the frogman asks, are you here to kill us? Lad is told to reply, no we are just looking for a way down to the next level. The frogman slightly relieved states, there is a war going on, and adventurers like you lot keep getting sent to kill our kind. Lad is told to ask, who keeps sending adventurers to kill you? The frogman replies, the giant snakes. Our heroes spend a few minutes conversing with each other, on whether if it will be a good idea to get involved in a war. Kurdic points out, we don't know who the good guys are, so I say we just ignore the war. We don't want to help the wrong side. Grid sighs, yes the last time we did that, I will never be able to forgive myself for what I did. Larilla smiles, Grid. We did what we could to help the goblins after the fact. As Vool said to us, we were misled by Willow, and she is the one the goblins blame, not you. Not wanting to spend any more time in the marsh wall than necessary, Lad is told to ask, do you know where the tunnel down to the next level is? The frogman replies, it's to the south. Before they leave, Grid casts a ritual so he can speak with the toads, and finds them not very communicative when he asks, what do you eat? The toad responds by sticking its long tongue out and catching a nearby fly. Our heroes leave the area, and when clear they turn to Loading, and Kaimin asks, do you know what those frog men were? Loading nods, I think they were bullywugs. As our heroes carry on through the marsh, they round another corner, and dominating this part of the marsh, is a large partially ruined 80 feet tall temple. As they look at the temple, they can see flickering torches coming through some of the cracks in the walls. Our heroes walk around the outside of the temple and when they get to its front, it is guarded by eight bullywugs and three giant frogs. Using Lad to communicate again, our heroes ask, what is in the temple? One of the bullywugs answers, it is where our boss stays. Lad is then told to ask, can we see your boss? The bullywug replies, he is not here at the moment. 
our heroes spend a few minutes talking, deciding if they want to wait for the Bullywug boss. Loading recognizes the temple and comments, the temple looks like it is of Seth. A Yuanti deity. Kurdic nods in thought, but could explain the war if the Bullywugs have forced the snake people away from their temple. Kaimin agrees, indeed it could. So, are we saying the Bullywugs are the bad guys? Our hero still unsure if joining the war would be a good thing, decide to move on quickly, to reduce their chances of getting involved in the war. Lad is told to ask, can you give us directions to the tunnel down to the next level? The Bullywug nods, yes, there is a smaller temple to the south, it is just beyond that. Lad is then told to ask, before we go, what is the name of your boss in case we meet him? The Bullywug replies, Kukef. Our heroes head off to the south, and soon after come across the smaller temple, this one is about 30 feet tall, and is in a similar style as the previous and also appears to be a temple of Seth. As they get closer to the temple, our heroes begin to hear the sounds of chanting coming from inside it. Suddenly our heroes feel a strong presence overcome their minds, and in their heads, they hear a voice ordering them, kill anyone in your group, who is resistant to my voice. Some of our heroes are not affected by the presence, but pretend to be, as they try to work out if they are the only ones not affected. Moments later, out of the marsh suddenly appears a heavily camouflaged Bullywug commando team. The voice commands our heroes, defend yourselves. Loading is the quickest to react and casts his most powerful spell, Psychic Scream, and ten Bullywugs collapse to the floor, too weak to resist the Bard spell. Loading then commands his shield guardian, Fireball the Bullywug still standing. The rest of our heroes begin to prepare themselves for the Bullywug assault, and the shield guardian shoots a fireball at some of the remaining Bullywugs, engulfing them in flame. When the flames disperse, the Bullywugs retreat back into the marsh. Our heroes then hear the voice again, you have done well. Come into the temple. Kaimin enters the smaller temple and ignites his sunblade to light the darkened entrance. When our heroes get into the temple, they see two Nogas proceeding over a mass of mind-dominated thralls. Under control of the Nogas are a pair of trolls, a dozen drow, half a dozen duaga, and a human. One of the Nogas looks at our heroes, and points at five of them, such a large group may prove meddlesome. You five go outside to the south and fish. The five indicated individuals are, Lady Gondafrey, Lad, Holy Flame, the Shield Guardian, and Max. When they have gathered the fishing equipment, the five leave. The Nogga then points to the Drow, you lot are on watch. When the Drow leave, the Nogga points to the Duaga, you six are on patrol. The other Nogga smiles, I need my backside washed. Human bring a scrubbing brush and get to work. The first Nogga points at the trolls, you two go into the garden and tidy it up. When the trolls have left, the Nogga smiles at our heroes, you lot are going to continue your good work against the Bullywugs. Larilla who is not under the Nogga's control draws Excalibur, and walks towards the Nogga as she asks, why are you mind controlling us? The Nogga shouts, kill the gnome? Moments later both the Noggas turn invisible. The human drops the scrubbing brush, and draws his greatsword and charges Larilla, missing her twice but hitting with a third attack. Larilla not wanting to kill her friend sheets Excalibur, draws her staff of flowers and uses it to hit the human. Loading steps into the corner of the temple and casts a shatter spell, centered on Larilla that catches her as well as the human, Kaimin, Kurdic and the Noggers. Kaimin still with the sunblade in his hand moves toward Larilla. The gnome is relieved when the rogue walks past her, and stabs one of the Noggers, before drawing a hand crossbow and shooting the human. Grid roars like a bear and charges towards Larilla, landing a heavy blow on her with his axe, but the gnome dodges his second attack. Kurdic casts a spell banishing the two Noggers, who the warlock can still see. The human shakes his head, what is going on? Larilla looks around at the others, and prepares to defend herself. Loading sighs, oh no. Let me heal those I injured. The bard then casts a mass healing spell on everyone in the room. Kaimin looks at Kurdic, how long until they come back? To the rest of the group the rogue continues, this is what happens when you constantly listen to the voices in your head. Kurdic answers Kaimin's question, depends on if they are native to this plane or not. Loading things for a moment, Noggers were created by an experiment years ago, 
when someone decided to use magic to breed humans and serpents. They are very much from this plane. Kurdic warns everyone, any second now then. Moments later the Noggers reappear. Grid instantly kills one, while the rest of our heroes gang up on the second one, with Kurdic getting the killing blow on it. With the danger now past, Grid shamefully stands beside Larilla, sorry about that. You can hit me back. Larilla smiles as she jokingly punches Grid softly, there. We are even. Kaimin looks around the temple, and finds a bag with 550 dragons in it. Kurdic stands beside the human and asks, who are you? The human who our heroes recognize, as they had seen him here in the yawning portal at some previous time, answers, I am Grel Momesk. Leader of a group of adventurers called the Gentleman Bastards. Loading then asks, where are the rest of your group? Grell sighs, captured by bullywugs. Loading follows up, were they mind-controlled? Grell shakes his head, I am unsure. The rest of the groups who were previously thralls begin to return, and our heroes explain what happened. The fishing group returned last, and Lady Gondafrey smiles, the fishing trip was not successful, but we did see the way down to the next level. Grid laughs, I know where a lot of fish are. The rest of our heroes shake their head at the barbarian's humor, and decide to take a short break to discuss what they are going to do. Our heroes decide to help Grell rescue the rest of his group. The other previous thralls decide to go back up to a safer level. Grid chops the Nogger's heads off, and holds them up, what does everyone think? We can hang them above the toilet doors. Does anyone know which is the male, and which the female? Loading laughs, Noggers are hermaphrodites. Grid shakes his head in confusion, Herm what are dites? What does that mean? Kaimin smiles, a Nogger has both male and female parts. Grid scratches his head, you can have both. Loading answers, some races can. Kaimin looks at one of the Noggers and begins to skin it. Our heroes decide to head back to the large temple, and Kurdic suggests we should take a couple of bullywugs that Loading put in a coma, just in case. Loading asks the shield guardian to pick a couple of the still alive but very much brain dead bullywugs up, and our heroes make their way north to the larger temple. As they approach the larger temple the guards point weapons their way, you have killed some of us. Loading holds his hands up, they are not dead. Kurdic adds, we have the means to restore them. Larilla apologizes, sorry, some of us were mind controlled by Noggers. Grid holds one of the Noggers' heads up, look we killed the Noggers. The guards begin to relax, and then suddenly stand to attention and start shouting, Yerk why block fluck? Why block fluck? Why block fluck? As our heroes look around, they see another group of bullywugs approaching. The group consists of a grey bullywug and a blue bullywug that look like they are in charge, and they are accompanied by some guards. Kurdic looks at the two bullywugs in charge, and can see that they are not in fact bullywugs, but before the warlock can point it out, a voice slithers into the minds of our heroes, a voice much fouler than the ones they had heard previously, as this one is reeking with savagery and wet with rage, you will be mine. My sons, my daughters, my kith and kin. Pain first, centuries worth of pain, but in the, liberation. Transcendence. Together we shall conquer as Sladia meant to, I will teach you the legacy of my people, your people. The grey bullywug grins, its face stretching impossibly far. With a hand, it dismisses its guards and as soon as they are gone, the illusion disguising it shimmers away, to reveal its true form as Kurdic had noticed earlier, that of a Batrachian abomination whose black, slimy flesh is mottled with a rash of bony spikes. The form of a slard. As our heroes look around, they see that all the bullywugs have disappeared, leaving them alone with the slard. However, there is quite a stretch of marshy swamp between our heroes and it. Loading is first to react, and the bard pulls a miniature platinum sword out of his pocket, that he had recently purchased, and uses it to cast a spell, and a sword of force appears beside the slard and begins to attack it. Kurdic holds a small straight piece of iron out and uses it to cast a spell. The hold monster spell he cast looks like it is working, and then at the last moment the slard resists its effects. Larilla riding on the back of Max charges full speed towards the slard, but only covers half the distance in the thick marsh, she would have across a grassy field. Suddenly Larilla is teleported off the back of Max, 
and appears further away from the slot than she began. Grid moves up to Kaimin and grabs the rogue, and using his cape of the mountebank, they both dimension door to appear beside the slard. Max worried about Lorilla begins to grow, doubling in size. Grell charges towards the slard but struggles to move in the swamp, and does not make it as far as Max towards the slard. Holy Flame hugs the shield guardian tighter and cries, please don't let me get wet. The slard goes to bite Grid, but Loading blows his horn and inspires the barbarian improving his defenses, causing the attack to miss. However, the slard follows up with attacks using its claws, and hits Grid and Kaimin once each. Lady Gondafei draws her longbow and shoots the slard hitting it. Suddenly the swampy waters around our hero's feet begins to move, and suddenly nine heads of a hydra rise out the water around them. Unexpectedly the hydra's heads begin to breathe jets of flame, engulfing everyone but Kaimin and Grid. When the flames die down two more heads rise out of the swamp, making it eleven hydra heads. Kaimin hits the slard with a well-aimed thrust of his sunblade. Lad's fingernails on one hand suddenly grow in length, and are about as long as his body is when they stop. He claws at one of the hydra heads, before hitting it with a chain he carries in his other hand. One of the hydra heads is killed by Lad. The shield guardian attacks one of the hydra heads hitting it once. Loading then casts a spell creating a burst of psychic energy causing static to both damage and muddle the thoughts of the Hydra. Kurdic uses the Staff of Power to create a wall of force, separating most of the Hydra heads from our heroes. Lorilla clicks her boots and flies towards the Hydra heads, and swings Excalibur slicing off one Hydra heads, closely followed by another. Suddenly the gravity around the Slar changes. Greed and Kaimin both manage to grab onto Swamp Reeds, but Max and Grell both plummet and smash heavily into the ceiling of the large cavern. Grid reaches into his pouch and pulls out a potion of heroism and manages to drink it by locking his lips tight around it, forming a tight seal, so its contents don't fall to the ceiling. The barbarian then swings his axe recklessly hitting the slard once. Max on the ceiling runs freely, no longer in the swamp and stops above the slard. Grell just stands there expecting the gravity to switch back at any moment. Holy Flame punches the Hydra hitting once, but his fists being mostly made of fire have very little effect on the Hydra. Grid had left himself open during his reckless assault, and the Slard takes full advantage hitting the Barbarian four times. Lady Gondafrey drops her longbow and draws her Holy Shard, and stabs and kills one of the Hydra heads. Only one Hydra head is on the side of the Force Wall with our heroes, and tries to hit Lady Gondafrey but misses. The other heads bump into the force wall a few times, before they realize they can go under it. When they rise out of the swamp again, they are joined by two new heads. Kaimin gets his broom of flying out, allowing him to attack the slard without worrying about gravity being the wrong way. The rogue hits the slard with a well-aimed thrust of the sunblade. Lad uses acid splash on the hydra, hoping it will stop it from growing more heads. The shield guardian attacks the hydra missing. Loading whispers a discordant melody, and the hydra tries to run, but its heads bounce off the wall of force. Kurdic steps to the side and shoots a lightning bolt across the swamp, through all the heads of the hydra, but only kills one of them. Lorilla hits a head of the hydra twice with Excalibur, but only with glancing blows. The fighter then surges hitting the head again killing it. The fighter then steps forward killing another head with a powerful swing of Excalibur, before she then stabs one final time killing the Hydra itself. The gravity around the slard returns to normal and Grell falls into the swamp landing hard. Max falls landing on the slard, hurting both himself and the slard. Grid carries on his reckless assault, pummeling the slard with vicious blow after blow, leaving it lying on the floor. Max growls and then digs his teeth into the jugular of the slard, killing it instantly. And that seems like a good place to leave our tale for today. When you return, I will continue the story.